around 5.03 a.m. And we are headed off four hour and 20 minute drive, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter to Dallas, Texas. We're going to Dallas, Texas today for the M4. We're going there as a day trip though, so we're spending four hours there, doing some stuff for the M4, and then four hours back. Remember the car? When the injector 6 got stuck open, we replaced the injectors with an M5 injector. From that point forward, we had to retune it, we've street tuned it. This car is perfect right now. We have everything tidied up, have fixed things that really didn't even need to be fixed, as what I mean is make it better. We made a lot of things better. But the car still doesn't want to get a boost. I can drive aggressively as much as I want. I can downshift to 6,000 RPM. But if I'm at 6,000 RPM, I can only give it like 30% throttle. As soon as I hit about 15 to 18 pounds of boost, boom, it, it, it just died. Like, I'll show you. But first things first, we definitely need to get EA5. We had to backtrack like 10 minutes one way, just get EA5. And that's gonna be a challenge on this trip because I don't know how many EA5 stops there are from here to Dallas. I might have to stretch it all the way to Dallas, which is like 256 miles, maybe less, because I'll find one closer. But it's gonna be a little tough, especially because E85 gets like 14 miles per gallon. Maybe better on the highway. I don't. I drive a lot of highway, but it's only for a couple miles at a time, so I really don't know my average that's on the highway. By the way, this is like a metal cap that goes over your factory gas cap. They're like 15 bucks off Amazon. They look really cool. You can get them in, I believe, blue, red, and maybe I, I recently saw yellow. I don't know if that's out yet, but I do know they're working on it. If you did not know, my name is Bailey Durant and welcome to the channel. We do a lot of car things, whether it's bagging the car, maybe doing a turbo upgrade, maybe you're just working in the garage, because now we're doing garage vlogs to anything that's car related and that's what this content's about. I'm located here in Oklahoma and every once in a while I will be going to Texas and I'm starting to pick up the camera a lot more. So if you like it, go ahead and push the subscribe button. We've been on the road for about an hour, uh, another 30 minutes or so, hopefully we'll see some sun poking. You can tell it's getting brighter outside. Once we see some sun and the water dries up a little bit, I'll do a soft pull, make the car act up like it has been so you can see what's going on. might be 190 ish kilometers 195 I don't know something like that so we have a distance to go I have a half tank of fuel I'm EA5 I can't stop anywhere which is not very much EA5 in the central states Oklahoma Texas there's just not very much of it I don't know if other states are different so I'll probably once I get down another quarter of fuel I'm gonna start trying to find an EA5 station because I know the all the EA5 stations from here on are gonna be closer in Dallas. I just wanna stop at the nearest one. So no matter what, I'm gonna be kind of pushing it. Especially because I decided to take Indian Hills Turnpike, which was an accident and it gave me a huge detour on my way to Dallas. So instead of me being comfortable with it, a little stressed, nothing to stress out too much about. Uh, but the risk, the risk went up just a little bit. The rain has been on and off, unfortunately, because I keep trying to show you what my car is doing, but I just don't want to do it in the rain. I'm gonna wait until it dries. The tires I am running are General G Maxes, they're RSs, they're summer tires, and they do amazing in the rain. I could do it, but I don't know, fine, let's just full send it. So let's slow down. So we're gonna slow there, watch the boost at the same time. And drivetrain malfunction. That was me probably getting like 50% throttle, the function is throttle, and it'll eventually just go back to normal. And we're back to normal. So we can get back up to speed and we'll continue our way. But that's what happens again boost, it just goes with haywire on me. It goes in limbo, the car is smart, it's protecting itself, and I am just hoping hoping that it's just tuning related if not we'll fix it not a big deal but i hope it's tuning related so we can get to dallas get on the dyno fix it be on our way so i don't have to spend a night here in texas but if i spend a night in texas 
Eh, I guess it's just part of the adventure, huh? I did get E85, and what's cool is on E85 all highway, this thing actually does get about 22.8 miles per gallon. That's me being efficient. I am in Sport Plus mode, of course. I don't do efficient, but that's not bad, I must say. This is the gate that all the magic happens for this car as far as tuning goes. On the other side of this is a bunch of dynos and work, and I will. Once we're all tuned up and fixed up, we'll go ahead and probably head out. We might meet up with a 335 to go ahead and kind of do something to hang out while we're waiting. Uh, that, that we will find out. Marcus, this thing's putting down some insane numbers for what it is. You know what's so funny? What? The typical E90 problems. Yes. The yes. Course. They have so many, but when you need to get all the little problems figured out in them, yeah. I miss my E92, bro. I like a lot. I'm I'm gonna get an E92 after this. I'm so done with this car. <laughs> Why? Are you gonna get another 335? Yeah. M54 or M55? Probably M55. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, I'm not going to sell this one for sure. Okay, so um, race car, then daily? Yep. I get that. <laughs> Wait, can you not do the outside one? Bro, no! <laughs> Don't take any girl on dates. You know what's funny? I take my fiance all the time. Taylor goes right in it, and whenever we need to go get gas, I'm like, you got to go pump for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be too difficult. Which luckily you did knows. that really easy, though. I feel like yeah. you did that easier than I would have been able to. Yeah, like there was times where I didn't want to get out. Sheesh, the intake looks good. Did it come blue or did you do that? It came blue. What brand is that? It's a black market, of course. That looks good. That's one thing I never did with the M54. Tell us about it. It's a, well, obviously it's a 2008 335i with a Speedtech bottom mount kit with the Turbo Smart wastegate and I believe the turbo is a Borg Warner S363. Yeah, it's 363. And it has pretty much the charge pipe, 5.5 5 inch intercooler, which that's surprising. <laughs> yeah. And tuned by a CD919. Yeah. I, I, think the, I think the dyno numbers that I got the other day was like a little play around numbers. Because as, as, as soon as CD9 found out that I was 200, not two horsepower away from 600, he was like, all right, no. We're, you just, you just... we're turning it up. Like, we're going... So now, I gotta find a shop that's not so busy so we can get it back on the dyno and get the for sure numbers. Yeah, you, you made a post about it saying how, like, all the shop men had to come and check it out. Yep. Do they do a lot of M54s? Is that their usual? No, uh, Jotec's more like a... It's like more into, like, Nissans, McLarens, and Lamborghinis, and Audis. Okay. So it's like they've been messing around with GTRs, the Huracans, and um, I know they did some BMWs back in the day. So this is like a huge sleeper for them. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, like they, they, they didn't expect it. And and at first when we had on a dyno, it was kind of a scare because on their dyno, it was showing that the car was leaning out pretty bad. Okay. And then uh, I talked to my tuner and showed him the numbers and he was like, no, the car is perfectly fine. Just turn it up. And 
Like okay. around that time, whenever he told me to turn it up, it was like already too late. I already went through four pulls, and like they told me to come back next time and we'll see what she makes. How many miles do you have on the kit now? On the kit, probably at least a thousand five hundred. Oh, that's not 1, bad. Six hundred around there, but you won't believe how much miles the car has. How many? One hundred and sixty-six thousand. Original motor. Yep. That's dope. So, buddy, Chance, the one that we rebuilt the Audi. His actually had 140,000 miles. Yours is higher. Yeah. So it just shows how bulletproof the engine is. You just got to replace like all the coolant lines, vacuum lines, and, and everything around the motor on these M54s. But that's why you kind of love them. That's my car. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that thing sounds so menacing. <laughs> so it's still going into limp mode a little bit. Yeah. I can tell because he's keep getting into like four to 5,000 RPM and it's going limp. Hopefully they figure it out. Yeah, actually, mine was having that issue at the... I, I don't know if you saw it on... Um, Facebook or Instagram where I went out to the roll races at okay. Mexico and everyone that saw the car they were like it's just bone stock but I went up against three 500 horsepower Supras gapped them and the SR20 swap big turbo at 240 and gapped them and they were like dang. what the hell <laughs> dang dude are you open diff still oh uh, yeah okay. I haven't changed the diff yet but I can get sketchy sometimes it, it does like <laughs> around like 120 I can kind of feel like the rear ends kind of like want to just give out so I'm like yes. uh, what kind of tire you got those are the Falcon uh, Zentis. Hey, we had, there's an M4 in there that had those same tires, but they were super bold. Yeah, these actually hook pretty good. I, I haven't had any issues. I looked them up just out of curiosity because that car inside there, and I don't know, something I might need to try. Yeah, it's it's actually not bad. Like it, I, I got kind of skeptical about them, but whenever I did like my research on tire tread, as long as it's like around like 200 or below, then it has some stick to it. Uh huh. But once these get warm, they they grip and then they don't let go that's good to know my driving style is more like shred tires i wonder how the wear would be if i decided to go drifting uh that's why i run i run general g maxes they're not like a full-on performance tire it's more like a street tire yeah but for some reason they've lasted longer than nittos toyota proxies and they've let way better mission pilots i only like mission pilots oh yeah i, I hate mission uh, they're pilots. good for just a normal street car but if you're trying to abuse your car i'm out on those yeah and they're way overpriced for I what i had they mission are. pilots on this car and like literally as soon as I got the Fort Worth to, I was actually gonna go swap my exhaust okay. to, with one of my buddies. What exhaust do you have right now? Uh, this one, it's honestly like a custom made exhaust. Like my I buddy, know the feeling, I know the like, feeling. It's sketchy, but like my buddy had it on a History 35i and when he found out I bought this car, he was actually selling this. Okay. So he was like, hey, Ooh, thick pipes, give too. me your, your stock exhaust and you can have mine. And, and sure enough, whenever I went by, I didn't know it was three and a half inch straight pipe all the way back. I was like, that's gonna sound sketchy. I just saw the pipe. It yeah. actually looks good. I was thinking Frankenstein. I, on my oh, last no. <laughs> 235, it was super Frankenstein. Yeah, actually, straight I remember pipes, that but one. It was like factory, the, it was the factory exhaust. And then we cut out just the mufflers and different time we cut out the resonators. And so all the pipes, we looked underneath, it looked ratchet. Yeah. Though. It looked bad. I mean, like, believe it or not, like the reason why I bought a 335 was because of yours. Really? And that, that's why. Because Dang. like literally like I I I had my 328 for like four years and that car like I tried mocking it up without doing the wide body to your 335i okay. in a sedan version and I got it kind of close and then when that car got totaled I was like you know what I'm gonna buy a 335i because I saw how much fun you had in that car. I love it. And I miss then, it. I tell them all the time I miss it. Yeah. They're, and I, I plan on probably getting another one. I don't know when. It would have to be down the road. Yeah. But I think it's the ultimate project car. Yeah, honestly, like, with the prices on these are going up. I already had someone offer me, with the miles, like, 10 for the car. And I was like, no. Like, I already dumped so much money into it. And Yeah, almost and, like, dang. And then, like, he <laughs> calls me, like, a week later. And he's like, I'll give you 12 right now. And I'm like, it's tempting, but no. Like, I know the feeling. It's... Just after all the money is dumped into it, and I've done all this in the in my garage. Yes, I, dude, good for I that. I literally done every single thing. I done two of my buddies' twin turbo installs in okay. my garage in the driveway. Nice. One of my twin turbo installs in the garage, and then I did the single install in my garage. See, that's how it should be, and it's like. I always explain it to some people that don't do cars. It's like kind of dr buying a Lego set or a puzzle or something at Walmart. Yeah. It's just an adult version. You're just doing it for the fun. Yep. It's sometimes you get frustrated a lot, yeah. but afterwards <laughs> you're so satisfied about it. And that's that's why I'm into cars. I'm not into cars for racing or anything. I'm into cars yeah. for the building side of it. Like this one, I got every. I try to get everything out the way on it uh, as much as I can because I only had the car for six months now. 
and I got all the performance out of the way. Now it's just pretty much get the welds in the back, get the apexes in the front, lower it a little bit, and, oh, and wrap oh, it. <laughs> so we're gonna be sending it. I kind of want to look at it. It's awesome. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about doing dock racing, but after doing a little bit of research, like they're really good kits, really really good kits, and. I just don't want to go through the time and hassle of having to change the O2 sensors because those are the biggest issues I've heard and seen. Yes. So I literally looked into Speed Tech and I ended up getting one and haven't had an issue ever since. It's like literally the best thing in the world, especially the Borg Warner Turbo. It's really, really good. All right, this will be a story for everybody. So I brought up open diff earlier because my first one was open diff. They've all been open diff. I've never upgraded my diff personally. Yeah. But now I realize how important it is to do it. And I was automatic. These cars don't stay in gear. They shift. Yeah. Right? So and I, you know my driving style. I yeah. like to literally shred my tires. I like going sideways. I like doing donuts. That car was hard to drift. It was because you had to keep it under 6,000 RPM or you would hit red line really fast and it would shift on you. Yeah. Mine was obviously bolt on and tuned. It wasn't anything like this, anything. But I, I was drifting out of a quick trip parking lot and it was probably 4 a.m. It was late night race night. Oh wow. So it was like 4 a.m. headed home and I drifted out of the parking lot. There was a car coming and so I kind of like put a little bit more throttle in it than I should have. Yeah. I hit red line, it automatically shifted and when it shifted, it killed all the power because it didn't have enough power to power through it. Yeah. And then when, when that happened, it flicked too far. I tried correcting it, but I don't have power at this point. So it flicks again, and basically I'm just fighting the car. I did this like three times, just trying to get it go straight. It eventually swung around and it hit just like that round curb right there. Oh. It was in a pull in. I hit one of those on my side skirts and it set off the airbags. The exterior damage would probably could have replaced everything for 1600 bucks, including side skirts, the piece of metal on uh, like your frame, cut it out, put a new one, and a couple arms. It wasn't that bad, yeah. but the airbags tore it out because it cost like 16 grand total, and obviously that car wasn't worth that much as far as 50% of the value. Yeah. But now I'm afraid of open diff. Yeah. So me even riding people's cars <laughs> when they're high horsepower, I'm actually getting afraid of it. You know you're not drifting, so it's not the same. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's not, how I like told this, my first car. Like this thing, like, it doesn't get rowdy at all. Really? Like, it doesn't. Like the only time she got rowdy is whenever I took it to these dig races. That was like an hour and a half from my house. And that's the only time it got rowdy because my tires got cold. And then right off the start, it was just kind of fishtail. And once it heat up, it just kept on going. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm excited for this like thing. Falcon, like Falcon made like a really good tire. Like I, I love it. Like, I'll say over the NT05s, because that's hey, what I, I have. Your you trial, then. I really should. Oh my god, dude! Woo! This thing. That is fun. It's, it's gripping. Yeah, like, literally, like, that's. That's like one reason why I kept the tires. Because at first, I was going to just go get the R888s. Uh huh. And. Aren't these, like, half the cost? Yeah, these are like literally half the cost and they grip so good. Like, that's what makes me like not want to get rid of them. Dude, I'm gonna have to try a different set of tires next time. It yeah. may have just uh, made me switch over. So, I, again, I don't want too much grip, but if I run the same size and that much power, I bet I can break them loose. I want to be a little loose. Yeah. Like, it, it's. Like, I feel like if I. Well, that was 27 pounds. Dang, you're almost up there with me. Yeah. I'm 30, 32. <laughs> And it's like, I'm pretty sure my tuner's gonna see this video. But like, um, he told me to turn it up and I'm like, okay. And I sent him a, like, like a little, um, a doggo meme to the moon and he was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Like. I kid you not, that felt, it feels healthy. It sounds so good. I can't hear the sound. This is honestly like, like the first single I've ever had to like literally mess around with on a 335i. 
So like the boost controller was new to me it, because I, at first I thought when you go single turbo, the tuners like like deal with everything like how they do with the twins. So um, when I had the boost controller, like my tuner would tell me do this and do that. And then whenever I send them a revision, not a revision, a log and waiting on a revision, I'll go around and play with this. I did not know that like if you turn your duty cycle up <laughs> and you don't mess with the gain or the or the sensitivity, the turbo starts to flutter. So like I had issues where, where like my turbo was fluttering and then I had to like literally blow up my tuner phone and be like, hey, I think I messed up my my car. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> That's so sick. Good job, Marcus. That's awesome. Thank you. I can't stop smiling, bro. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It sounds so good too. The noises of like single turbos. I wanted a single turbo the M4 so bad, but at the time, at the very moment, I couldn't find anyone to fabricate anything, and there was nothing on the market other than one company I don't trust. Yeah. So it, it, I ended up doing the twins, but dude, this sounds so good. It felt so good. Open diff, not afraid of it right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like honestly, Speed Tech did a killer job, like on this kit. Like literally, it only took me like, like an hour because I, I kind of had like some hiccups. Wait, what? Whoa. Yeah, these roads are rough down here. Yeah. People complain about Oklahoma roads. I feel like this is worse. Um, I've had some hiccups like installing the kit on the car, and like it only took me at least like an hour, hour and a half to get everything together. And after that, like it was all it was all set sail. Like I started the car the next day, and it was fun. Like we were ripping it by my house. <laughs> like you're probably in disbelief. Like, I was just like, I can't believe my car's this fast, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it was like one of the best things. Let's get one more in. Oh. <laughs> I think it's probably time to turn around like that. <laughs> Put me in the seat. Like I love being a passenger, too, because you feel it so much more. Like, honestly, I eventually just kind of died out and in the, the day it was all software problems uh, kind of figure how much we looked over the car compression testing and leak down testing we we did a boost leak test we did so many tests on this car so I kind of figured that was what was going on right and then Matt was kind of going over everything that we've done too while he was looking at it and he's like a doctor for these cars especially the tuning side dr. Matt so, doctor found out, uh, and by the way, these injectors are coded to the car. I mean, it's not like we, we missed that. I did that with the M54, I know how that works. So, all that was done a long time ago. We just couldn't get the car tuned and act right. But I was still daily in the car and driving it like normal. The car drove normal and aggressively. It was faster than most cars, even broken, which was really awesome. Tunnel, I'm so sunburnt. Look at that. I got burnt today. But basically, we didn't really mess, he didn't, I don't believe he messed too much with the PI, he definitely did, but he had to change the way the car, he had to band-aid it, he had to change the way the car was acting and doing the math for how much fuel to pour in. And that's all it was, once he figured that out, he went ahead and made all new tunes for the car. Right now we're on the high torque tune, which is the one I daily. Yay, we just made like an hour further out of Dallas. And we went to, this is our third gas station for some EA5. Boom. That's good to see. Looks like as of right now, it's going to be another 3 hours and 45 minutes before I'm home. 10.20 p.m., that's not too bad. We did just knock out like an hour of it. Uh, I guess we just need to get out of traffic so we can do a dang pool, huh? All those booster noises. I missed you. It's been a couple months. 
Drop a couple gears. One more. Here we go. Bye bye. Gee, I'm gonna go to jail. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. That is crazy. So. The numbers are similar as what they were to last time. Maybe another 12 horsepower. It's like 712 to a wheel. But, dang. Man, I've missed it so much. Now, let's focus on not going to jail and let's just, let's get home. It's been a long day. It's over. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Peace.